the Alabama Crimson Tide could be making a massive splash in the transfer portal, and we have got to talk about it. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from y'all. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Do you believe that the Alabama Crimson Tide wide receiver room can be as dangerous as we've seen in recent years? And let me know who you think are going to be the standouts. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification because I do constant college football content, and you don't want to miss any of it. I'm on my push to 5,000 subscribers in my first year, and I'd love to have you along for that journey. And finally, if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and comment down below, because those interactions are really big to content creators such as myself. But with all that being said, we need to talk about the Alabama Crimson Tide continuing their big year, because apparently signing the greatest recruiting class in the modern era isn't enough. Winning a national championship isn't enough. Tying the first round draft picks isn't enough. And then sending a boatload in after that isn't enough. The Crimson Tide and Nick Saban are never satisfied, which absolutely explains the success that he's been able to sustain. Because we now know that Jamison Williams, speedster out of Ohio State, who many regarded as the fastest, if not the fastest, one of the fastest guys on that entire Ohio State roster, has entered the transfer portal. And we know that he is down to five teams, A&M, Bama, Florida, Michigan, and USC. But today we have a crystal ball put in for the University of Alabama to ultimately land Jamison Williams. And this would be big because this is a spring where we have some questions at the wide receiver position. And I say the word question lightly because I don't want to make it sound like I worry about the Alabama wide receiver room because I really don't that room is so unbelievably loaded it is insane remember and I think this is important John Mechie quietly almost had a thousand yards last season in fact he was able to do that in a season where Jalen Waddle started red hot and Devontae Smith finished in historic fashion somehow in those two parallels John Mechie almost had a thousand yards that is incredible he comes back he is going to give this team a major boost I think one thing else before we move on from Mechie is that when all four of the rideouts were here when John Mechie was a freshman he was making noise in freshman camps when he was at the University of Alabama, when he was doing his part against the first team, against the second team, he was being very successful. The coaching staff was talking about him. He's someone they've been excited about. He's going to eclipse 1,000 yards this season, and he could be the next Alabama wide receiver taken in the first round of the NFL draft. I truly do believe that. The question is, though, who's going to be the guy outside of Mechie? We know Slade Bolden is going to be in the slot. We know he's going to be involved, but we don't know if he's going to be able to lock it down. Guys like Christian Leary are an absolute speedster, and Nick Saban has been preaching speed. Christian Leary's a blazer. JoJo Earl comes in over the summer, and I am as high on JoJo Earl as I think you could possibly be on a receiver. How he wasn't a five-star is beyond me. It's like trying to tackle Smoke. You can't tackle him if you were in a phone booth. He is that elusive. He has got speed. He has got elusiveness, and he has got an electric nature to him that Alabama will utilize frequently. I'm promising you, you're going to hear the name JoJo Earl next year. I would take it to the bank. But even then, it's a young guy. We have a lot of true freshmen who look to be great. Hall on A-Day showed that he is the next superstar Alabama wide receiver, or at least he has the ability to. And then Javon Baker is a guy that the Alabama Crimson Tide coaching staff are incredibly high on. And look, we need to co trust the coaching staff. If they're high on Baker, and I'm high on him as well based off of what I've heard, based off of what I've been told, this is a guy that has and a factor to be special. It's all about coming together, and it's all about consistency. But why this would be so big is because you would be getting in a speedster that is a bigger guy standing six foot plus that has college football experience to come in and help take the pressure off of Mechie, to help take the pressure off of Robinson. This right here would affect the entire offense because it would allow everything to move more cohesively. And I understand this is an incredibly loaded Alabama wide receiver room. I mean, loaded to the nines. But this is a guy that his speed, his experience would make for almost instant playing time at the University of Alabama. And if you think about some of the formations they do, you could have a situation where you have Mechie, Williams, and then Baker all on the field at the same time. And at least in my head, the way I can see this playing out with Bryce Young at quarterback, that's a deadly trio. And then you add in Jalel Billingsley into that. My goodness, the Crimson Tide could be in a situation right now where we've heard Saban say, well, we need speed. We need speed. Speed is big. And I think we need to understand, like I said at the beginning, 
a lot of the speed Alabama looks to return or at least bring in wasn't available during the spring game, whether it was Mechie just being out, being getting healthy, whether it was Leary being out, or whether it was JoJo Earl just not being there, a lot of the speed for Alabama just simply wasn't available. So when you add in Mechie, when you add in Leary, when you add in JoJo Earl, and then you get Jamison Williams, this Alabama wide receiver room could have just been taken to the next level, especially because Williams is a guy that has experience. It'll be good to take pressure off of Mechie. It'll be good to take pressure off of all other aspects of the offense, especially with how Alabama likes to spread the ball around, and it'll be good for the younger guys to have another guy to learn from. Wiggins, if he's able to land Williams, will look to improve him, but this is something that could be huge for the Alabama Alabama Crimson Tide, and in more ways than just playing, because y'all have heard me say this before. Saban isn't out here just playing checkers. No, no, no. Saban's out here playing chess. Not only has he been preaching speed, and Alabama loses four wide receivers to the first round of the NFL draft in two years, which has never been done before. Oh, by the way, it is now officially eight pass catchers that have been put into the first round of the NFL draft in the Saban era alone. That is astounding. Not being matched by anybody else, I can promise you that, because most other institutions haven't put that many wide receivers into the first round of the NFL draft in the Saban era. He has that many first rounders, eight officially, with Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith. But now back onto this, and why Saban? Saban is playing chess. He's been preaching speed. So now he gets that in a guy that has speed, has experience. Williams owns multiple st- state track records. He gets all of that. But Williams is also from St. Louis, Missouri. And if you think about it, the Tide have a wide receiver target right now that's been their top wide receiver target that is from Missouri. Kevin Coleman. And in fact, a guy we also talked about not too long ago, who apparently is close with Jamison Williams, Luther Burden. The Crimson Tide could be in a situation where bringing in Jamison Williams gives them another guy with familiarity to the area in which Kevin Coleman, in which Luther Burden come from, which could help the Crimson Tide's chances of landing both of them. It'll be hard to take Luther Burden away from OU. Look, Alabama's wide receiver U. We all get that, but we also do have to give respect to OU and their ability to develop offensive guys, their ability to play with Lincoln Riley, that's going to be a tough flip. But the University of Alabama, if they're able to get Jamison Williams and he's able to kind of preach to them that they could be comfortable here, if they enjoy their time there, that could be a huge factor because it'd be a great grab for Wiggins getting Williams. It'd add an extra layer for him to go out and say, look, I'm able to do this. If Williams has a great career at Alabama, it just gives more credence to his pitch to Kevin Coleman, to his pitch to Luther Burden, which that pitch doesn't really need much more credence. Look at Alabama's history with wide receiver. They, I mean, that just speaks for itself. But this could be that extra wrinkle that you look for that turns the tide of of a recruiting battle. Recruiting is finicky, and these things right here matter. And this is why I say, Saban is out here playing chess. This guy can play in any different area on the Alabama Crimson Tide wide receiving room, and that's what makes him so dangerous is because he gives flexibility to this room. He can play X, he can play Z, he can play Y. Whatever we want from him, he can play H. This is going to be a really, really good addition if the Crimson Tide are able to capitalize it, but that's why I say this would be such a good get. If the crystal ball is accurate, and I hope it is, this would be meteoric for the Alabama Crimson Tide because they already have a just incredibly loaded wide receiver room, but this would take it to the next level, adding in experience, adding in speed, and also adding in a guy with roots and a hometown that is the same as two of the top targets for Alabama at wide receiver, two five stars, the number one wide receiver in the nation in Luther Burden and the number two wide receiver in the nation, Kevin Coleman. Kevin Coleman's been Alabama's top target at wide receiver for this entire process. They look like they're in a good place for him. Luther Burden announcing that he is going to be visiting the Tide. If they're able to pull Williams, that could make all the difference in both of those battles. But I can't wait to hear what y'all are thinking. Hop down to the comments, let me know. Do you think that the Alabama Crimson Tide wide receiver room will be as dangerous as we become accustomed to? Give me a Y for yes, give me an N for no. Let me know who you think will stand out. And do you think the Alabama Crimson Tide ultimately lands Jamison Williams? That's it. See ya.